What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm here with... Gersh One. And we're back to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater... Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question, because we get to those questions first. That is what Timothy Armstrong did. He asks, How does the Inquisition prevent its psychers from turning to chaos? Since they're part of the Inquisition, they do whatever they want. Pretty much. Uh, so that is a good point. Uh, there have been a lot of Inquisitors, uh, or members, even Ordos of the Inquisition that have turned to chaos. Um, and the reason for that is, like you said in your, your question, um, they are um, autonomous, so they're just like space marines, nobody really controls them. They, they might um, take, um, it's not advice, but like counsel from like the High Lords of Terra and stuff, but at the end of the day, an Inquisitor can do whatever he wants as long as he has his uh, Rosette, I think it's called. And uh, unfortunately some of them turn to chaos. Yeah, the allure of chaos is very strong, especially for um, like demon hosts and inquisitors that deal with that type of aspect. Um, so a lot of times there's, I feel like in a lot of books, like a lot of black library books, it's always an inquisitor that has like turned and he's now like the main bad guy. Yeah, the big schism right now within the uh, Inquisition, and you're going to see this in most of the lore and in most of the black library books, is the idea of using warp powers to fight uh, chaos mm -hmm. or using warp powers as like a last resort and never uh, like really going towards warp powers. Right. Um, those inquisitors uh, that hold that warp powers are bad, they're usually the older inquisitors and then the newer like um, modern inquisitors want to use warp powers um, to fight chaos, kind of like fi fighting fire with fire. Mm -hmm. Um, which is dumb, because <laughs> most of them turn to chaos. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So, it happens. Yeah. They don't really prevent it. Uh, next question. This one's by dfool 6 What, or who, powers the Astronomicon before the Emperor was entombed in the Golden Throne? Or during the Great Crusade? I think it was, like, self-sufficient, wasn't it? Uh, like, like, the warp wasn't as... Turbulent as it was? Uh, he was asking during the Great Crusade? Yeah, like basically when the Emperor is not on his throne, so like... It was... So it was the Emperor. The Emperor was able to control the Golden Throne uh, because he wasn't all dilapidated and like injured. <laughs> uh, Horus's battle really took a lot... Took pretty much everything out of the Emperor. Um, so the fact that he's on the... Uh, he's powering the Astronomicon... Um, is, is kind of it. Yeah. But back in the day, he was able to fight, he was able to like be the emperor and not even be the emperor in the solar system, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so he, he, he could go like to other systems, other sectors, still fight, and with his mind, power the Astronomicon. Um, but yeah. He knew that that wasn't gonna last though. He knew that at some point he was going to uh, need help. Which is why uh, his plan was to put Magnus on there. Yeah. It's like, I've been powering this all day. Magnus, I need you to be the battery. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Defool06. Which faction has more ship, ships, chaos, or the Imperium? I uh, see. So, yeah, so, which uh, faction has more ships, chaos, or the Imperium? Um, I would say it's kind of like, um, like Space Marine armor. Uh, chaos tends to have ships that are old, they come from the Horus Heresy era. Um, so I, I would give it to the Imperium, because the Imperium can actually like still somewhat create these massive ships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I only say kind of, because there's a lot of lore that says that uh, certain classes of battleships are are lost, like their uh, blueprints are lost, uh, and they cannot be uh, rebuilt. Next question. This one's also by Defool06. How do you guys fund your giveaways? Do you buy these using your own money, or do you have a sponsor that sends you these for giveaways? Patreon. Yeah. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys fund it yourselves for the most part. Uh, Patreon helps a lot. Um, sometimes we do like collabs with like painting studios or uh, other YouTubers and stuff like that. But for the most part, Patreon. If you guys want to support us, link in the description. It's a dollar a month. Um, in the near future, 
uh, we will start putting exclusive content on there. Even though that's kind of something that we've we've played with for a little bit, and I don't know, I, I don't like the idea of like putting a paid wall for content. I think it should be a paid wall or no wall. <laughs> Just like if you guys want to donate, donate. Uh, we'll, we'll do giveaways, but we'll see. No wall. No wall. <laughs> Tear down that wall. Next question comes from Duncan Barry. If there were to move a black pylon or any to the Golden Throne, would this close the rift and thus allow the Emperor to take his mind away from keeping it closed? Um, so the pylons uh, that you're talking about are, because we talked about this last week, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the pylons basically restrict warp... Um, what's it? Just like the like, warp. Yeah, it, it hinders any advance of the warp. Yeah, so if you were to put kind that... Kind of like a wall. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you were to put that near Terra, not only would it um, seal off the warp uh, from underneath the uh, Golden Throne, it would hurt the Emperor. Because mm -hmm. the Emperor is a psychic being. Um, it's basically like introducing a, a massive, giant uh, null. Or blank. Yeah. Or pariah, whatever you want to call it. Not good. Next question. TSL Frontman. Do you think GW will kill off or discontinue any of the current factions? They seem to like keeping a manageable, manageable number of active in circulation, and there seems to be more coming. So do you think it's possible that the Men of Iron, the Dark Mechanicus, or the Fallen will be some to fall off the edge? What do you think? No. The only... Uh, I'm trying to think of anything that was like discontinued completely by GW. I think there's models that get discontinued, right, but like, not whole like lines. No, you know? the well, the Vostra like all the specialist Imperial Guard regiments, those you can't really get anymore. Yeah. So I guess if you want to think about it that way, uh, yeah, I guess. But I'm, I I agree that they. I don't think they're going to cancel an entire line. Right. Like, yeah, they have very few models for, like, the Dark Mechanicus and stuff like that. But I don't think they'll completely say, hey, we're not going to produce these anymore. Um, the only thing that I know was kind of like, hey, we're not making these anymore is via Forge World. Like, Forge World has stopped production on, like, Tau Battle Suits, the Tau Crew, um, the Greater Narlocks and all that stuff. So that kind of sucks. But GW specifically, I don't think they've done anything to that extent no um and then just because we're on the topic of like miniatures and and like uh, new stuff coming out i have noticed especially with this past weekend's uh like reveal of all those cool models i have noticed that gw is starting to do something that they're going to compete with whiz kids um and and be uh an alternative because yeah, an alternative to other games. Like, you can buy models from GW to use in other games. Because in the past, GW was pretty, like, strict about um, they want their models to be for 40k or Warhammer, uh, and that's it. But I think nowadays, especially with, like, the Shadow Sphere, um, Age of Sigmar stuff, they have, like, a, a five-man squad of, of minis in a little box. And, I, and some of them are already, like, primed, pre-primed. Mm -hmm. um, you could easily buy that and then use it for your Dungeons & Dragons campaign. You could use it for, like, any other type of uh, game. I think GW learned that we shouldn't be um, uh, as exclusive to ourselves. We should open up um, our model line uh, so it could entice other people. And they're trying to do what WizKids is doing. Uh, and I think it's good because GW has way better sculpts than WizKids. Oh, yeah, hands down. But on the plus side, well, I don't know. Like, another counter argument is, like, obviously WizKids is, like, hero click figures. They're all painted. Yeah. So you don't have to build them. You don't have to pilt, uh, paint them. And they're taking out the plastic, and they're ready to go. Yeah. But again, for the hobby side of things, 40Ks, like, conversions and you get to add your own flair to things. And I bet you we're going to see uh, uh, this boom in um, miniature and tabletop games like um, get bigger. Especially with the popularity of... Um, the, what's that Dungeons & Dragons show on YouTube? With, uh, with that one... What's it called? 
like they're actors and then they play their voice actors and then they play uh um, like critical role yeah like critical role and all that kind of stuff yeah their kickstarter like did astronomically well and that's all and that's all good for us too like 40k players and like um war gamers mm -hmm. um because that whole group um starts to learn more about 40k and and then the popularity yeah. gets bigger to build off of that too i was just at the mall earlier today and i went into like their bookstore or whatever they now have a dungeons and dragons starter kit based around stranger things oh yeah i saw that yeah. when you get a little model of the two. Uh, you get the demogorgon. two, two demogorgons yeah so it's pretty cool to be like hey, you've never been into like D D, but you like stranger things so let's try this out yeah, and then they're going to buy the mini, and then they're going to be like, this is a cool-ass mini, and then they're going to go and search for more minis, and mm -hmm. bam, they, they make it to 40k. Yeah, because what does a Demogorgon look like? A warp demon. Yeah, a real Demogorgon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The end goal, though, the end goal should be a live-action uh, 40k trilogy. Directed by Quentin Tarantino. Guillermo del Toro. Oh, yeah. Uh, next question comes from Codename Stefan. Any idea on what happens if the Tyranid, if the Tyranids finally go go for the galaxy? Uh, Ragnork is commenced, and the Emperor awakens, and other mad shit happens at the same time. That would be really badass if if the end times for forty k would be that every single faction gets their end time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like the. Um, it's just like pandemonium. The chances of that happening are pretty slim, um, but still, it's it's uh, it would just be chaos everywhere. Pandemonium would ensue. Uh, last question. Uh, this one is by uh, oh Reverend T G. I saw this one earlier and I lost it, but it's here now. Do you think that Cipher could be Alpharius, or maybe another high-ranking member of the Alpha Legion? Perhaps Alpharius knew about the Fallen, and now he's trying to help. What do you think? Because Cypher seems very Alpha Legion to me. Mm, no. In my opinion, I don't think so. Um, Cypher's doing his own thing for... I wanna... I hopefully to resurrect the Lion. Or at least bring him back to like... Not resurrect because he's not dead. But like bring him back to his to his prime with the lion sword or maybe use the lion sword to resurrect the emperor something like that whatever it is i want cypher to be like a fallen hero doing the dirty for the betterment of the imperium and i don't think alfarius would go to those lengths but you never know because alfarius is everyone he's you he's me he's us And those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Um, support us on Patreon if you can. If you, if you cannot, uh, be cool. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget, we do have a uh, Twitter, Instagram, a uh, grinder. Um, a, a grinder? A mm -hmm. uh, blender. <laughs> Yeah. I'm Alchemist. Gershwan. Out. Out. Always used to put my freedom first in any